So lecture 11 of 12. So this is our penultimate lecture. We have one more lecture to go after today. Today we're going to talk about digital band pass modulation. So last week or last lecture, we spoke about digital baseband modulation. That means modulation without modulation. So pulse code modulation, etc., where we have a physical medium. Now we're talking about um, wireless transmission, so band pass modulation. If at any point the screen freezes or um, disconnects or anything else happens to the uh, display, do warn me so I don't carry on. So we've spoken about digitization, we've spoken about the sampling and quantization, we've spoken about how that together allows something called uh, pulse modulation and pulse code modulation. We've spoken about the maximum limit, how fast we can transmit data down a physical medium. What remains is talking about band pass modulation. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And these abbreviations will start making sense in a few minutes. And on Thursday, our final lecture on multiplexing. Very, very simple, straightforward lecture, not a lot um, of uh, additional material in our final lecture. Okay, so this is the last of the really important lectures. So that's today, that's next week. Sorry, that's Thursday. Problem class next week and our class test. Okay, the class test is at nine o'clock next Thursday. Okay. Practice tests are already online. And importantly, if, you, if you're unable to um, uh, make it at that time, you need to let me know. Okay, so if you're traveling, if you don't have access to the internet that day, if you're ill that day, if you know in advance that you can't make it that time, let me know, I'll make another arrangement, okay? Otherwise, it's nine o'clock for everybody, okay? No exceptions. So here we are, and we have one lecture to go, okay? What I've done is I've extended the time for two hours. That doesn't mean it's a two hour test. It is going to be something like a 40 minute test, meaning that you only need 40 minutes, okay? 40 minutes to an hour maximum, okay? I'm giving you two hours because of the arrangement at the moment. You might not have high speed internet, vital might be causing you issues, you might so it, you might run out of time and still not get access to vital. You might get onto vital, but then none of the figures appear. Okay, many things can happen if, if you're unable to do the test for any reason, or if the test crashes and you're unable to finish it. If anything happens, I need to know. Okay, so let me know. The best way to let me know is to use the discussion board if you can. Okay, if you can't, you can't, so get in touch by email, okay? But if you can, let me know if any issues on the discussion board, okay? So you already have one class test result, and this will be your second class test. Then you have your exam. So if something goes wrong and you can't complete the second class test, don't panic, okay? it'll be okay. I can either rearrange to take the test at another time, and if that's not possible, you still have your mark from class test one. Okay, so don't worry, you're not going to get a zero because you couldn't access vital. Okay, but I would very much like it if you could improve on your mark from class test one using class test two. Is it possible to improve your mark? Absolutely. Will there be practice questions? Well, I've already put up three tests and very few people have taken the three tests. And I'm gonna put up an, a fourth test this week um, that should be more than enough to prepare you for the, um, for the class test next week. So 
we have already spoken um, about this. This was lecture 10. Today we're going to be talking about this, lecture 11. So we're going to be talking about wireless communication, um, band pass communication. I see that the screen um, has frozen. Can you all see the screen? Can you see the screen, that's the, the slide that says next steps? Okay, so something's up with the, um, something's up with the screen, let me see. So, when we spoke about modulation in uh, the context of analog modulation, we said that when impressing information upon a carrier, we want to change some characteristic. Remember we said modulation is changing some characteristic of uh, a signal. And we said the, the only characteristics that we can change are the amplitude, the frequency, or the phase. And if it's amplitude that we change, we call that amplitude modulation. If it's frequency, we call it frequency modulation. If it's phase, we call it phase modulation. So there's um, those three characteristics we can change, and we can do that with an analog message, and we can do exactly the same with a digital message. So there's very little difference between analog modulation and uh, digital modulation. Difference isn't in the modulation as much as it is in the nature of the message. So um, you're familiar with this analog um, modulation. You can change the phase, you can change the frequency, you can change both the phase and frequency. We haven't looked at this, but it's possible. Today, in digital modulation, in a very simplified way, think of a, 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 a signal where we use the amplitude to change the, so we use the amplitude of the message to change the amplitude of the carrier. So we either have an amplitude of the carrier that's um, non-zero or zero, depending on whether our message is one or zero. We call that amplitude modulation. But to distinguish it from analog modulation, we call it amplitude shift keying, ASK. Now, if we change the frequency, that's called frequency shift keying, and it's, it looks very similar to FM. When you have a one, you have some frequency, let's call it a high frequency. When you have a zero, you have a lower frequency. So F1 and F0, you have two frequencies. Phase shift frequency, Phase shift keying at PSK, exactly the same. Depending on whether you have a one or a zero, your signal will have one of two different phases. Okay, so this is a brief summary of what today's lecture is about. So when we talk about amplitude shift keying, initially I'm going to talk about something called binary amplitude shift keying. That means there are only two possible states, one and zero. Okay, so on, off. So you either have a one or you have a zero. And remember, a digital signal doesn't have to have two levels. It can have three levels. It can have 3,000 levels, but it just has to have a finite number of levels. So if that number of levels happens to be two, we use something called binary ASK. Okay, another way of referring to that is two ASK. We call it two ASK, meaning that there are two levels. Okay, so you have your high frequency carrier and you have your modulating signal. No difference between that modulating signal and an analog signal. It's exactly the same. The only difference is that the information is digital, but the actual signal is exactly the same as an analog signal. It's just uh, a variation of voltage on, on a, from a transducer traveling, um, so the, the, the signal itself is a, a variation in voltage from a transducer on some, some component or some cable. Now, if you think of multiplying these two, let's think in very simple terms, just like DSB. Remember DSB? So DSB suppressed carrier. That's a simple multiplication of the carrier 
times the message. What will that give you? It'll give you something like that. It looks just like DSB. The only difference is we've got these zeros here. So nothing new. But this is our new digitally modulated signal. It's called ASK, amplitude shift keying. So this is suitable for band pass transmission, for wireless transmission. Whereas this is not suitable for band pass transmission. This is, is still a um, baseband signal. Okay, so which do you think will have a higher frequency? Baseband or band pass? Well, look at this carrier frequency. This carrier frequency is much bigger than the message frequency. Whereas here, it's in the, in the region of the message frequency. Obviously, it won't be the same as the message frequency because you've had the digitization. So you're already multiplying by the number of bits, n. Okay, so, but here it's, oops, um, here it's much higher. Okay, so the frequency for um, uh, band pass modulation is much higher because of the carrier. So this is amplitude shift keying. I'm going to go through exactly the same exercise with um, frequency shift keying. So exactly the same. You've got your carrier. You've got your signal. This time the signal, rather than being zero one, I'm just representing it as being bipolar. But it's the same kind of signal. So you've got one frequency and another frequency. It doesn't matter which is high, which is low, but you've got two frequencies. Okay, corresponding to the one and the zero. So you've got one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Now, obviously, your message doesn't have to be one, zero, one, zero. I mean, that's a, a very boring message that's just going to be one, zero. So um, you could have one, one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, one, one. And obviously, this will follow, that will match. Okay, this is just an illustrative example. So what are we saying here? We're saying that the lowest frequency has to be at least twice the symbol rate of the data signal. Why do you think that is? Okay, so ask yourself why, okay? That's a question for you. Now, phase shift keying, exactly the same. You've got your high frequency carrier, you've got your signal. Again, it's bipolar. But what's happening here? You've got these phase reversals. So you've got one phase here and a different phase here, one phase here and a different phase here. So um, depending on whether it's a one or a zero, you have a different phase and you can think at the receiver, we would be trying to recover this. So depending on what phase is, we would try to recover the original message. So DPSK, this is a form of phase shift keying, but rather than looking at the absolute phase, we look at phase difference. So instead of saying, remember in the previous slide, that if we have a one, then you'd have this phase. If you have a zero, then you have um, 180 degrees out of phase. What we're saying is if we have a one, we have a change in phase. And if we have a zero, there's no change in phase. So that means that whenever at the receiver, you, de uh, you detect a change in phase, that tells you that we have a one. And if there's no change in phase, that gives you a zero. So you can tell that the DPSK has an advantage over PSK in that you don't need to know the phase. All you need to know is a change in phase. So it helps, um, it helps making it easier at the receiving end. So we've now looked at ASK, FSK, PSK, and DPSK, it's a form of PSK. So, You've seen this slide before. Now I've added a little bit uh, more detail. So in terms of comparison, ASK is simple, has a low bandwidth, but is susceptible to interference. What does that remind you of? 
Doesn't that remind you of AM? Exactly, it reminds you of AM. So FSK, in a similar way to, um, uh, to um, FM, has a larger bandwidth and is less susceptible to interference because we're less interested in the amplitude, we're only interested in the frequency. And you can imagine that PSK, because we're looking at phase and phase changes, is more complex. It's more complex to transmit and to receive, but it's best in terms of interference. Okay, so we've already drawn this diagram. We said that an ASK generator is really just a DSB modulator, nothing more than that. You're just multiplying a high frequency carrier by your input. And your input happens to be the result of a digitization process. But it's exactly the same as an analog message. Everything that applies to an analog message will apply to this. Okay, so this is very similar to DSB. What does the spectrum of DSB look like? So when we look at um, normal DSB, let me remind you, normal DSB, if you had a message that looked like that in the um, frequency domain, if that was your baseband message, then DSB would look something like this, where you'd have a carrier, but no carrier component, and then you'd have S, FC plus FM. That's what DSB would look like, all right? ASK looks exactly the same. Why does it have this sync envelope? Where did the sync envelope come from? Came, come from? Well, remember that um, what we're doing is multiplying in time. So multiplying in time corresponds to convolution in frequency. So what are we convolving? We're convolving the spectrum of this, the carrier, with the spectrum of this, the message. What's the spectrum of the carrier? The spectrum of the carrier should look something like that, FC. What's the spectrum of a rectangular pulse? What's the spectrum of a rectangular pulse? Sync, well done, Decom. So what you're doing is you're carrying out a convolution between these two things, a convolution between this and that. And that's where this comes from, okay? Now, very quickly, we're moving on to the section. So in this lecture, we're looking at uh, digital modulation and demodulation, amplitude and frequency and phase. So it's a lot to cover, but not in great detail. So how did we recover uh, AM? We either used a coherent demodulator or a non-coherent demodulator. So we either used an envelope detector, which is exactly this, or we used a coherent demodulator. We can do exactly the same for ASK. So this is your ASK. Why does it look, why doesn't it look nice and crisp? Why doesn't it, why doesn't it look like a perfect ASK. Why is it, why does it look like that? Any idea? Dekan is asking, shouldn't it be two sinks? Yes, there are two sinks. There's a sink in the negative frequency. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the positive frequency. So yes, so um, strictly speaking, there should be another sink in the negative frequency, but uh, in the positive frequency um, is only that sync. So um, w why is that uh, distorted there? You say noise, but it's not necessarily noise. It's, 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 it's a combination. So um, it might be noise, but more importantly, it's distortion. So when the shape changes, it's normally distortion. Noise is usually added to the spectrum. 
okay? So it's it's combination of noise and distortion because of the channel. Remember, we're talking about wireless communication, band pass communication. So this is, um, it's been transmitted onto the open uh, radio channel. So it will be, there'll be interference from many other things, transients, yes, there'll be interference, noise and distortion. But let's focus on uh, distortion and bandwidth effects. Okay, here we have a low pass filter and a comparator. Comparator is just a um, threshold uh, circuit that um, uh, picks up whether you have a one or a zero. So that's your non-coherent envelope detector detection of ASK. We can also use coherent uh, detection. Coherent is exactly the same as DSP. We have a multiplier, local oscillator, and low pass filter. The only thing that we've added the only thing that we've added is this comparator. So this is the bit that didn't exist in analog modulation. So when we uh, were using an envelope detector or a coherent demodulator, we didn't have a comparator, okay? So even the filter, the filter, you still need some kind of filter as part of your envelope detector to remove the, uh, to remove the ripples. But what's uh, important here is the comparator. That's where you get these crisp um, binary signals. Well, not, even, not necessarily binary, simply digital signals. So what we're adding here is the comparator. This is the bit we're adding. Okay, what about FSK? How do you generate FSK? If you think about it, um, FSK is simply two streams of ASK. So if you think about it, you have one frequency here, that's your high frequency, and you have another frequency here, that's your low frequency. So in terms of your bit stream, if you had say one, zero, one, zero, it's as if you have another stream of zero, one, zero, one. So let me um, just add a bit to this um, block diagram. Say this was your um, signal, x of t. So it's as if our input stream is reversed. So you have your input, 1, 0, 1, 0. Then you have the opposite, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then we add these together. So this FSK is simply the result of two ASK streams. That doesn't necessarily mean that's how we generate it in practice, but that's one way to visualize it. That's one way to, to, um, to imagine it. And if you think this about the spectrum, the spectrum will just be two ASK spectra side by side. So how is FSK actually generated? Well, you can have your two cosines and then you can have a switch. You can imagine it like that as if you have a switch. So this is almost, um, uh, reminds you of a coherent detector or sorry, a coherent uh, modulator where you, or a DSB modulator. But you, here you have a switch. So it's as if you're switching between carrier one, carrier two, carrier one, carrier two. So you can think of this as carrier one, carrier two, carrier one, carrier two, etc. Okay. Now this switch isn't just um, going back and forth, that switch is controlled by your actual input. So it could be carrier one, carrier one, carrier one, carrier two, carrier one, carrier two. So it depends on your input. Another way to generate um, uh, FSK or frequency shift keying is to use a VCO, a voltage controlled oscillator. Voltage controlled oscillator, the frequency is controlled by 
the uh, input. So this reminds us of FM, remember? In FM, you can use a VCO to vary your frequency. So here, rather than having these abrupt, notice um, how here you have an abrupt, abrupt means sudden, so you have an abrupt transition. Here, you have much smoother transitions because the frequency is increased, whereas here you're switching, you're just switching, literally switching between two carriers. Okay, so Deccan is asking, does the comparator change analog to digital? Effectively, yes. It's a threshold, so effectively it does, but that's not its job. Um, the result 0101 plus 1010. No, Dekan, this isn't a digital electronics where we're adding together. We're not adding um, X of T plus not X of T. I mean, but that, would be, that would be silly. I'm not saying um, X of T plus not X of T. I mean, that, 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 that would be silly. That would just give me 1111. One, one. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Okay. I think. Um, you need to imagine what's happening. What we're doing is we have uh, X of T modulating a data stream and not X of T modulating another data stream. Then we're adding them together. So if you like, yes, this is one, this is one, this is one, this is one, using that logic. But we don't want that. We want at the receiver to say, this is one because it's a higher frequency and this is zero because it's at a lower frequency. And this is one because it was a higher frequency and this is zero because it was at a lower frequency. So yes, it, it is one, 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 one. If you think in terms of ASK, but in terms of FSK, we're looking at the frequencies. Okay, so we've spoken about coherent FSK uh, de uh, detection using a, um, no, we've spoken about um, FSK generation, we haven't spoken yet about demodulation. So how do you demodulate FSK? Again, think back, back to FM. How would you uh, recover FM? It is possible to use an envelope detector for FM, but you still need a differentiator first. So here, what it's actually doing, the reason we can use an envelope detector is because we're recovering two ASK streams. It's as if we're recovering ASK1 and ASK0. And then we're comparing, we're saying which is bigger. So you need a band pass filter, one centered at F1 and one centered at F0. In this diagram, it's called F2. So you're, you're, you're filtering out the two data streams. So you end up with these two data streams. It's, it's, a, it's as if you end up with this going into one um, uh, envelope detector and this going into another envelope detector. So what you'll be picking up for this will be something like that and here you'll be d d uh, uh, receiving the exact opposite. And then you compare, you compare this value with this value, which is bigger, that. Then you compare this value with this value, which is bigger, that. That's what a comparator does. Then you compare this value with that value, sample points, which is bigger, that. Then this value with that value, which is bigger, that. So you have a one, zero, one, it one, zero, one, zero. So that's your one, zero, one, zero. Okay, that was FSK, detection, uh, sorry, de uh, modulation and demodulation. Let's talk about PSK. In PSK, we're actually switching the uh, phase, so it's best to use a bipolar signal, and then, same thing, you're multiplying, just as if it was ASK, just as if it was DSB. So, you have your high frequency carrier and that can be multiplied by either a zero or a one. So if this is multiplied by a one, then there's no change. 
But if it's multiplied by a zero in bipolar, that's a negative. You're multiplying this by a negative. You're going to cause a phase shift right there. So there you have 180 degrees phase shift. And the same again and again. So depending on whether you have a one or a zero, you can be multiplying by something positive or something negative, and that'll cause that phase shift. Now, so we've spoken about ASK, binary ASK. We've spoken about FSK, binary uh, FSK. We've spoken about PSK, binary PSK. But we're still only able to get um, uh, one bit per symbol out. If we want high or higher data rate, uh, data rate, if we want to maximize the amount of information that we transmit per unit time, what we want is more than one bit at a time. Okay, so if in each symbol I can put in more than just one bit. So instead of one, I could put maybe one zero or one zero one zero. So if I can put more than one bit into one um, burst of carrier, then we can get um, a higher data rate. So let's say we had two bits on every wave, that'll give us four different amplitudes. So just think about it for ASK. Think about instead of having just two levels, binary ASK, think of it about having four levels. Okay, so that's one level, that's another level, that's another level, and where's the fourth? Um, that's your fourth level. So you have um, zero, one, two, three. You have four levels. How do we do that? We do that because we're using two bits for every symbol. So instead of just using zero, we're using the next bit, zero, zero, or zero, one, one, zero. So this, it depends on your bit, bit stream. So in this example, my bit stream is zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, one. So, for four level ASK using two bits, the first two zeros are bundled into one symbol and that has that amplitude there. The next two bits, one, one, that's your level there. Then the zero, one, that's that, etc. So every two bits get transmitted into one symbol. So effectively, we have now doubled, we've doubled the um, uh, data rate. We've managed to put twice as many bits through on the same number of cycles of carrier. Spice is saying, what about demodulation of PSK? I'll leave that for you. But remember, PSK, um, PSK is simply summation of ASK. So the spectrum of PSK is the same as the spectrum of ASK, but the demodulation of PSK is actually um, quite complex. Okay, so we're not, I haven't yet given you a block diagram for PSK demodulation. There's more important um, things to do. So what we need to know is the block diagrams for modulation, and demodulation of ASK, FSK. You need to know the spectra for ASK, PSK, and FSK. But you don't need to worry too much about demodulation block diagram for PSK because it's, um, it's quite complex. So another variation of PSK, so we've looked at PSK and DPSK, differentially coherent PSK. Now there's something called quadrature PSK, which is the same idea as four level ASK, but this is the version for PSK. So it's four level PSK, so four phase shifts. So we're using two bits, again, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. But what we're doing is we're saying, well, 
we can have four phase shifts. Why do we only have 180? Why not also have 90 and 270 and zero? So instead of simply having two, now we've added an extra two. So we have a total of four possible phase shifts. Okay, so here you can look at the different phase results. Now, obviously you need a, a more complex detector to be able to pick up these phase shifts, but it essentially allows you to double your data rate. Now, if you wanted to um, multiply your data rate by four, you could change both the phase and the amplitude at the same time. There you get four bits per symbol. So you're doubling um, the data rate by changing the amplitude from two levels to four. And the phases, instead of two, we're using four. And if we use both together, we get um, uh, a factor of four. Now, it's not easy to draw that. It's just going to be confusing. But it's enough if you can visualize a combination of this and that. That will give you what we call QAM. And we use that in broadband. Okay, so it's basically ASK plus PSK put together. It gives you an improved um, data rate at the expense of error rate. Why do you think it's at the expense of an error rate? Why do we have more errors? Why are there more errors if you're changing the amplitude and phase at the same time? Think about that. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a, a couple of quick pointers. In terms of amplitude, if you're comparing two amplitudes, then your comparator doesn't need to be too sensitive. It needs to simply be able to tell whether it, the voltage is above or below some threshold. But if you have four levels, then you need to be able to detect three thresholds. So the effect of noise, think of noise affecting your signal. Think of the same noise affecting this signal, which is more likely to cause a bit error. Clearly, the closer the levels are to each other, the greater the um, relative quantization noise, right? The quantization error compared to the peak will be greater as a percentage. And therefore, the effect of noise will be uh, greater. In the same way for PSK, if you're only detecting um, 180 degree phase shifts, then your receiver doesn't have to be as accurate or as precise. It doesn't have, doesn't have to be as sensitive as one that's detecting four phase shifts, 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees and zero and 180. So uh, that's why we get more errors the more bits we're trying to cram in, the more bits per second we're trying to cram into uh, a single unit of bandwidth. Okay, final couple of slides, um, applications. So most communication you'll find around you will be, um, will be uh, digital. So for example, the remote control that you use to control your TV, that has ASK. FSK, you use that for high-speed data communications, dial-up internet, also for caller ID. It's also a part of Bluetooth. Phase shift keying, you'll find that in 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, all high-speed digital communication uses some variation of PSK. So QPSK and QAM 
of variants of this. You'll find QAM in broadband, and you'll find QPSK in satellite communications. Okay, so going forward, so the, the higher the data rate, the more complex the communication, the higher the frequency, the more complex and the more number of bits per second we're using, we'll be using things which are um, uh, less simple. But for the, the simple applications like um, a remote, you might use something like ASK. Okay, so these are all the simpler applications. Okay, so um, look around you, wherever you see digital communications, this is the kind of um, thing. So when we say dial-up internet, most of you will never have used dial-up internet. Most of you will probably only have seen <laughs> Windows 95 on TV. Um, but this is the kind of thing that was used um, for that. It still exists. FSK is still being used for things like caller ID and Bluetooth. Okay, so now these things should make sense to you. Quick reminder of what remains. We have our final lecture on Thursday, problem class next Monday, class test on Thursday, okay? After Thursday, I'll then release the uh, practice paper and some past papers, and I'll help you um, to go through that. Okay, so that concludes today's lecture. Um, let me stop the recording.